Hi guys, I'm at the cosmetic clinic again here in Ottawa with Nurse Chelsea and I'm freshening up my Botox. We looked at the date that I last had it done. It was in September. We're at the end of January, that's four months. I just noticed that things are loosening up a little bit and I like to keep on top of it. I always can tell when I need my Botox again because my eyebrow starts getting higher on this side. I have one surprised eyebrow, very expressive eyebrow. <laughs> We're gonna do this area here. We're gonna do here and a little bit here, here. We're doing this area right here so this doesn't get pulled down. And it's not jowls, it's more like it gives a lift to the um, outside corners of the lips. And I also do my uh, neck area, these these muscles right in here, which I love. I think the one thing that I like to tell people about is your the fact that you have done preventative treatments for mm -hmm. so long that you're in a position that everybody wants to be in. So I want you to frown for me, like that kind of movement is what people, like this is after everything's worn off. This is what people are trying to achieve. So we're actually doing a half dose in that area and we have been doing a traditional half dose there and it's been working beautifully yeah. because you've been working at it for so long. My so first Botox was 30. 30 years, years old. old. Yeah. So you're in your 50. I'm 51. 51 now, exactly. Yeah. So that is truly preventative. Yeah. You were obviously ahead of the time when you were thinking because not a lot of people were doing preventative stuff maybe like 21 years yeah. ago. Um, so I love it. It's and everybody's great. asking me, they always ask me what my skincare is. I have good skincare, but it's really has a lot to do with the Botox. Yeah. Because it just, the texture of my skin looks so much better once I've had the Botox. Absolutely. It's like, you have to think about every single layer, right? I was just using this analogy with somebody else about like a bed frame, a mattress, and a sheet on yes, top. Yes, good point. Like the musculature, the bones, and the fat is the bed frame and the box frame, but to have a really nice flat sheet, you kind of got to deal with everything underneath as well. So that's a great analogy. That's, that's my yeah. thing. That's Chelsea analogy. Okay, so I'm just cleaning, cleansing the skin. We have to always cleanse the skin with an antiseptic. Alcohol. For Julie, we do, we actually do quite a few of the traditional areas and some of the non traditional areas. So we like manipulating muscles with Botox, but we don't necessarily want to manipulate all of them. We have some rules and we have some areas that um, are exceptions to the rules. And you kind of uh, do all of it, which might surprise some people. Mm -hmm. Okay, frown for me, show me that muscle movement, which again, isn't a whole lot, so you can relax that. And here we go. So people always ask me how much this costs on average, say somebody just does the forehead. Yeah, I would say you're on the higher end because you do- Because I do areas, everything, yeah. But yeah, it's usually, honestly, it's between three and $500 for a typical treatment. Raise your eyebrows up for me, okay? And relax that. So Julie doesn't have a lot of movement, but she does have some lateral movement here on the side. Raise up again and show the camera. So this is, she's got some strong, and she has one eyebrow that kind of comes up a little higher than the other, the surprised eyebrow. Yeah. four hours we don't want you lying down and we don't want you rubbing any of the areas for the rest of the day and they all come back to the same idea we don't want you moving it if it doesn't go into the muscle it's not going to work and if it goes into another muscle that we don't want it in then it's going to work in a different way that right. we don't want it to so just be mindful of that and especially later when we're injecting these areas that's going to be really important sometimes we don't inject the, the chin at the same time as what we call the DAO because it's in too close proximation to this muscle here. So we just have to be really careful after not to move anything around okay. there. So don't aggressively wash your face. Don't aggressively wash your face. Yes, yeah. Okay. Tomorrow you'll be okay, but yeah, today don't. Turn towards me just a little bit. Smile really big and show me the movement that you have there. Okay, and relax that. And here we go. There's going to be three. This is my favorite. Okay, smile real big. Okay, and relax. Okay, this is an easy one. Just pout for me. I want to see what kind of movement you get here. Okay, and relax that. Great. What exactly does this do? There's a muscle right. here, the depressor angularis oris, and it grabs basically the corner of the mouth and it pulls down and it's tethered to the base of the mandible here. So it pulls down. So what do we do when we put neurotoxin in something? It actually gives the opposite effect to the muscle that it's naturally doing. And so if it's naturally pulling down, it's going to allow it to come back up. So this will make me look happier. It's, yeah, it's going to bring <laughs> the corners up. It's yeah. nothing, it's not a crazy um, 
result in terms of it looking very different, but it does help elevate the corners of the it mouth. It just softens which it a little bit. It softens bit. it because we attribute a downturn mouth to um, sad or angry. And that's so what I tell people. I way. just want to look how I feel, yeah. which is happy. Exactly. Happy. Um, maybe not always feel awake, but you do want to look awake yeah. too. Yeah. Sad is just not my thing. These sure. are my Hulk muscles. Yes. Who do them for me? So these guys are the ones that we are trying to get. We try to stay as lateral as possible. Do it again for me. Yeah, see, and it's hard for them to come out. I love this one. There we go. Perfect. So basically, this these muscles are pulling my exactly my this yeah. area down, yeah. which is opposite of what we want. We want it tighter okay. in to pull up. So, like you said, it's an opposite effect. Exactly. So once you relax those muscles, it will it does the opposite of what it's it intended will to tuck do. it in. Yeah. And it's, it's just more so also that gravity over time, this muscle tends to like pull downwards. Mm -hmm. And so it ends up pulling everything with it and we don't like that. So we put the toxin in and it wants to snap yes. back up again. So underneath the skin, imagine there's a whole bunch of adhesions that the skin is actually being pulled um, by these adhesions attached to the muscle. So there are specific muscles in our ne neck and face that the skin is actually attached to the muscle, but the rest of our body, a muscle is atta attached to a bone. Um, so we have the ability to affect skin with toxin from the face down to the neck. And that's what, exactly what's going on. It's all attached. And so if the muscle's relaxing a little bit, then it's gonna bring the, the skin back up again. Yeah. And just have that tightening effect. Snatched. Exactly, and how yeah. we find it are these bands. And those bands are what are showing when you go like this. Okay. So do that again for me. Exactly, right there. And there's, there are other ways to do this, but this, this way has been working for Julie. Can be done in the lower jawline. And one more. Done! That's Yay. it. So just a reminder not to lay down for four hours. No rubbing, really in any of the areas if you can help it. Most importantly around the eyes because it's, it's, that's where we really don't want anything to move into other muscles. Yeah. That's where we get into trouble. So just take it easy. It's one of those days that you know, it's fine to just do a whole lot of nothing. Mm. A light, night, nice light walk could be okay, but any intensive exercise. Also, we know that we can actually sort of sweat the toxin out, so we don't want to do that either. Okay. It's not cheap, so let's keep the let's keep it in. inside. Honestly, for me, it's important that we don't let people leave with this idea that everyone can see what I did. Mm -hmm. and that's why I always make sure people are are always cleaned up. They leave, mm -hmm. don't leave with any marks on their face. Yes, I am rubbing this a little bit, but but you're not. You're I'm just touching it away it. from the eye. Yeah. yeah. If you have an itch, do it lightly and just eye. move it away from the eye. Because the, the the muscle we don't really don't want it in is actually right behind the iris of the eye. Mm. Um, that muscle is the one that's responsible for that eyelid droop that everybody hates or mm. the, that everybody is so afraid of. And so we just really want to stay away from that okay. as much as possible. It would be theoretically very difficult for any of the injections that we did to get in there but you're on the cautious side like if there's something that you don't like we can always come back absolutely right? you can always add more mm -hmm. you can add more really hard to take it away but you can always add more and shave it yeah and sometimes it's good to take a step back and see what happened here what did we do how can we improve it whereas we just kind of do too much at once it's very difficult to make that assessment yeah you're good to go obviously a little bit of redness for um you know 10 or 15 minutes and then after that it goes down yeah but you i love you because you're not afraid to talk about it so if anybody asks you <laughs> thank you, you would be so honest yeah i just would tell them <laughs> i'm not ashamed i was just in to see nurse chelsea awesome Perfect. thanks guys yes my pleasure